I like the splattering technique with the brush. I love that. Yeah, that's a splattering technique is is can be quite uh, fun. Hello everybody, welcome. Here we are in quarters where we're doing some glazing here. We've got some buckets of Raku glaze and we're wanting to glaze off some of these pots. Namely this one I've got here at the moment. Just check that camera's on the right setting, yes. <laughs> okay, so we've got in here a Raku glaze which is 80% um, alkaline frit, 10% china clay, and 10% quartz. And it has a sort of teaspoonful of copper oxide added to it. And um, <clears throat> give him a stir up. But really, when doing kind of raku work, simple, go for simplicity. Don't try to over decorate and over complicate the pot. Right, well, this one I'm going to pour in the inside like that because the outside I'm going to leave for another sort of a poured decoration. So So we're going to wipe that off there. Have you got any more to do, Donna? I can I can get one to do. Yes. Right. Now I'm going to do a poor decoration, one of my favorite ways of decorating, just using a spoon. So in order to do that, we're just going to hold the pot like that and I'm going to pour it like that. It give that poured you hold the pot at an angle, you see. It gives a kind of decoration that's quite lively. To me, for me, Raku means spontaneity, lively, not too premeditated, freedom, those are the kind of words that come, come to mind. Okay, now I've poured that using the spoon. Just gonna hold it there for a moment. Okay, now you can see what we've got there. Now between there, I'm now going to pour another glaze. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is basically the same glaze as that. In other words, it's uh, alkaline frit 80%, china clay 10%, and quartz 10%. <clears throat> but in this case, we've got probably a half a teaspoonful of silver nitrate crystals dissolved in water mixed up in here. Um, let me just give that another a bit of a mix again. So, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before with that, but this time pouring between the the trails that I've already done. So let me just come a little closer to the camera. So with a teaspoonful again. I get a bit of overlap over the other ones but I like that.
See, any, any one of you could do this. It's, it's not difficult, really. <laughs> <laughs> he lies. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not difficult. Any fool could it's, do this. If it's I could just do it, lovely. anybody could. All right. Hold it a second there just to let the biscuited ware absorb the... Okay, now... It's so pretty. You see that? It's a, a decoration that's got a bit of movement, you know? A bit of life in it. And what I do then is... Where's the... Uh, oh, here it is. I've got here in this plate effort, I've got some copper oxide and water mixed up together. Uh, I'm just trying to get mix them, t them two together. You don't want to have the copper oxide so thick it's claggy on the brush. So we're going to, with the brush, the tapping technique on the brush like that will hopefully give a splattered effect again which can be can be quite nice later on because of course the the copper oxide will reduce and come out a greeny, in some cases, actual copper will be seen. So, also when you're working with brushes, you can make yourself a little brush stand like that. Just a piece of soft clay, roll it out, and then use the use the brush to impress like that. And it stops your brushes rolling away on the table, which they will do if you don't do that. So are you right then? Yeah. Okay. Mix it. Don't look. That's watery. There. Make, yeah. make sure it's sort oh. of it's well, it's well mixed. Otherwise, it will. Okay, folks. Well, look. There is. Well do. A simple, a simple decoration which, when it's raccooned, should be good. <laughs> hey. It's lovely. Keep practicing. We'll see you around. Lovely and sunny here today. Very very pleasant. Okay. Bye now.